Praise the Lord, everybody. A little late getting started this morning. We have some issues with Facebook, and uh, so we're kind of doing this electronically, manually. We've got Mike here in the second row holding the telephone and uh, trying to make this thing work. So everybody be patient, and uh, whatever the glitch is with Facebook, they've been experiencing for the last couple of three days, and so it's ongoing. But uh, in the meantime, we'll get on with the Word of God, and uh, appreciate y'all being here. Hope everyone's well and safe, and uh, we love you, and appreciate you being a part of the service today, and uh, thank you for communicating in various ways over the last week or two, and uh, I want to thank y'all for your continued support for the church. It's, uh, it's a real blessing to be able to <clears throat> continue having services and being able to communicate and connect this way, and so... Uh, with that, I want to mention, too, that uh, next Sunday, we're going to be having uh, taking communion, and so you can uh, kind of be prepared for that uh, next week to get whatever elements you have. It doesn't have to be wine and crackers or grape juice. It could be whatever you have available, uh, but I think it would be a good time to, uh, since it is Easter Sunday, it would also be a good time to share uh, the communion with one another. So, praise the Lord, and uh, again, God bless you all. Appreciate you being here. And uh, bear with us, it's a little bit uh, awkward uh, today trying to do things even differently than we have in the past. So uh, it's always a challenge, but praise God, we'll, we'll get through it, hallelujah. So, praise God. Uh, I thought we maybe we just better move into uh, the best part of the service. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and that is, <clears throat> you know, if with all the things going around these days, if you get a bladder infection... You're in trouble. <laughs> You're in trouble, praise the Lord. And speaking of that, uh, you know, it's easy to pee because it's one of your innate abilities. Your innate abilities. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Praise God. I was talking to uh, Darlene and Ron, or Don earlier in the week, and he asked me if I had any really bad ones for this week. I said, you can count on it. <laughs> and there's proof of that. But I did see something that was interesting. I, there was an article about a woman uh, in her 80s. I thought it was fascinating. She'd been married four times. And the guy that was doing the interview was just, uh, all, you know, just almost going crazy about the fact that all of her husbands were so diverse in their careers. Why she would have been connected to these four extremely different uh, types of individuals. And so he was asking her about the, the, the different husbands and, and why her husbands were so different. And, and he said, you're, you're married an, an undertaker. But he said, your first husband was a banker. Your second husband was a circus ringmaster. Your third husband was a preacher. And now an undertaker. He said, what, how, did, how did that come about? And she kind of smiled and she said, well, it was one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and... Four to go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought that was <laughs> diverse, but quite entertaining at the same time. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, again, let's get on with the Word of God this morning. Appreciate you all being here with us again. And I want to start out by reading uh, Psalms 91 from the Message Bible, so you don't have to put it up there, Suzanne. But uh, I'm going to read 91. This is from the Message Bible. So, you who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow, say this, God, you're my refuge. I trust in you, and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps, shields you from deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing. Not wild wolves in the night, not flying arrows in the day, not disease that prowls through the darkness, not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left, no harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpses. Yes, because God's your refuge, the high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. 
You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick young lions and serpents from the path. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care if you'll only get to know and trust me. Call me and I'll answer. Be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you, then throw you a party. I'll give you a long life, give you a long drink of salvation. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we need to keep that in mind as we go through the upcoming weeks and, and months, uh, however long it may be. I'm, I'm confessing it'll be over sooner than later. But uh, in the meantime, we need to keep our focus on the Lord and on the Word of God and not on all the chaos that's going on around us. Amen. So with that, let's, let's go. I've got four scriptures here I want to read to open up with, beginning with Romans 8 and verse 31. Romans 8 and 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Joshua 1 and 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And then lastly, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he saith, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Praise the Lord. So all of those scriptures are covenant promises. They're covenant promises that God has made for us. Amen. And he made them with himself on our behalf so that we couldn't break the covenant, so we couldn't screw it up. Amen. So even when you fail, God has put in place a means by which your failure will not come against you because God has made a covenant with himself on your behalf. Praise the Lord. And so the problem that we face is too often, you know, we, we speak perverse or corrupt, as the scripture said, corrupt speech. And we entertain then corrupt thoughts, which eventually lead to fear. You've got power and you have authority as a child of God. Amen. The first thing the devil has to do is stop you. Amen? And like a serpent, like a snake, he tries to bite you and infect you with poison called fear. Amen? And if you're fearful, you're being poisoned. Amen? God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but a peace, love, joy, a sound mind. Amen? And so you may notice yourself wearing down. You may feel a little tired and, and exhausted. Why? Because the vision or the confidence you had is being sapped because fear has come in. Amen? Look at Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel or the word of God to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Excuse me. So, Fear will cut off the heavenly vision and cause blindness. Amen. I'm not talking about eyes here, natural eyes. Uh, amen. Because Satan doesn't come to blind your natural eyes. Amen. In fact, he wants you to see everything that's out here in the natural world. Amen. Because he knows the reason he doesn't come to blind our natural eyes because he knows we don't see with our natural eyes. Amen. We see with our mind. Praise the Lord. That's why the scripture says to renew your mind to the word of God so you can impact the things that you're seeing. Amen. Now look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. This is where he says renew your mind to the word of God. Amen. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. And so fear cuts off this heavenly vision. 
we have to renew our minds to the Word of God and attack the fear. Instead of being just cowering in our bunker, you know, we need to attack it. We need to go on the offensive because otherwise you become a victim. Amen? So we need to attack the fear. The first thing Adam experienced, amen, after rejecting God's Word was in Genesis 3.10 where he said, I was afraid. Amen? Why was Adam afraid? Because faith perverted is fear. Praise the Lord. It's twisted. Amen? Luke uh, 9, 39 through 41. Luke 9, verses 39 through 41. Luke 9, 39 through 41. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him, that he foameth again, and bruising him heartily, departeth from him. Remember, this is the, this is the young man that had the epilepsy or some sort of seizure issues. And he came to the disciples, but he, had this, he, he was throwing this fit, and he was vomiting, and he was foaming at the mouth. And, I mean, it was freaky. It was scary. And so the, he, he, he said, I besought your disciples to cast this demon out of him, but they couldn't do it. And Jesus' response was, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring the Son here. So here's the deal. Their fear of what they were seeing kept them from being able to deliver this young man from the demon or from the spirit that was impacting him. Amen? The devil knows if he can get you scared, he'll, he'll limit what your abilities are to respond to the Word of God and to what God wants to uh, do in your life. Amen? And that's why Jesus called them, because of fear, that's why He called them a perverse generation. Because fear is faith perverted. Amen? And so uh, it's a twisted generation, in other words, is what He was saying. And I don't want us to be living in a time where God says, they're a twisted generation. They're a perverse generation. No, we're not. We're going to operate by faith. We're going to stay out of fear. Amen. We're going to replace anytime fear comes, we're going to replace it with the Word of God. Amen. And bring faith in to combat that. Praise the Lord. Let's look at this in, in, Gen or excuse me, in Numbers chapter 13, verses 32 and 33. You know, I hope, I hope you, most of you I'm sure do, but I hope that all of us understand these aren't like three steps to victory or something. This isn't a, a program. It's a reality. It's the truth. It should be the way that we just live our lives. Amen? Whenever there's an attack, whenever there's anything that comes against us contrary to what God has promised us, we have to stand in faith. Otherwise, fear will come in and rob us, amen, of the very promise that God has given us, amen, regardless of what that might be, whether it's prosperity, whether it's healing, whether it's uh, security and safety. All of those things happen the same way. God's already done everything He needs to do. It's just a question of whether or not we will faith it into our lives as a reality, amen. So they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Praise the Lord. Amen. So giants, fear. It twisted their faith. God had told them, if you'll go, it's yours. It's, uh, it's the promised land. It's the land that flows with milk and honey. I'm going to give you all the blessing. And they said, yeah, I mean, it's great, but there's giants in there. Huge giants. They're scary. They're freaking us out. They, they could kill us. We look like grasshoppers to them. And we look like grasshoppers to us compared to them. Amen? So look at Numbers now. 14 verses 3 and 4. Numbers 14 verses 3 and 4 now. Wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Where, were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Now God had delivered them, got them through, out of Egypt, uh, out of, across the Red Sea. I mean, he's done all these things, fed them uh, manna from heaven, amen, water from a rock. All of these miraculous things that God had done. And now because they've seen giants, the same God that had been providing and protecting and taking care of them had told them, if you'll go, I'll go before you. I'll defeat that enemy for you. But you've got to go. And they said, we can't go. There's giants over there. And then they go on to say how bad God is and he's not taking care of us. See, giant 
or fear affects your judgment. It affects your vision. It affects how you see things. Amen. How you perceive things. Praise the Lord. So 2 Kings now, chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. This is a story about Elijah, remember, and, and the king was mad at him because Elijah was getting information uh, that the king wasn't given to anybody, but God was giving it to Elijah. And so the king was furious, and he said, I want to find that guy and get this stopped because he's given away all my secrets, right? And so he sends out an army, and therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, or uh-oh, we are in big trouble, master, how shall we do? Amen? And so Gehazi freaks out. He panics at what he's seeing. Amen? Now look at verses 16 and 17. And he answered, this is Elijah speaking now, and he answered the servant and he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Amen. Angels surrounded the enemy. Amen. So we may be fighting a battle today that's not in flesh and blood, but it is a spiritual battle. Amen. And we have to recognize that the way we defeat the enemy is by the spirit. Amen. Not by flesh and blood. We're not battling flesh and blood here. We're battling a spirit. Amen. Of death and disease and sickness and fear and all the things that come with that. Amen. So the angels surround this great multitude. Amen. And why? Because of the word of the man. He believed and he spoke, and there they were. Amen? Now, look at Hebrews 1, verse 14. You say, well, that's great for Elijah, you know, but we're not living then. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Praise the Lord. What he's done for one, he'll do for another, Amen. if you can believe. Are they not all ministering spirits? Talking of angels, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That's you and me. Amen. That's us. Praise the Lord. Look at Psalms 34 and verse 7. Praise God. Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Praise the Lord. Look at me. You have angels with you right this second. Right this moment. There are angels surrounding you. Amen. They minister to the heirs of salvation. If you're a believer, you're an heir of salvation, and you have angelic beings ministering to you and for you at this very moment. Praise the Lord. If you could see with the eyes of the Spirit, you would say... They that are with us are more than they that are against us. These angelic beings are greater than any virus, any disease, any poverty, anything that can come against you. Amen. And they're with you right this second. Amen. It's not something that's going to happen in the future. It's already there. It's already happening in your life. Amen. Psalms 34, uh, verses 13 through 15. Psalms 34, verses 13 through 15. Praise the Lord. See, you've got angels all around you, but the thing is, angels don't move automatically. They don't operate under, under their own initiative, praise the Lord. They move based on a command of God's Word. Amen? And if it comes out of your mouth, if it's God's Word, it's the same as if God spoke it as far as the angels are concerned. Amen? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil, do good, seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the, of the Lord are upon the righteous and His ears are open unto their cry. Praise the Lord. God, he, He's lent an ear. Amen. He has given you His ear. Praise the Lord. He's open to whatever you want to share. Amen. And if you'll share the Word of God, it will release power. Amen. In your life. Amen. Elijah said, open his eyes. See, we've got two sets of eyes here. Uh, four eyes. Praise the Lord. Natural eyes limited to natural 
things, right? And we have spiritual eyes that can see into the future or into the realm of the spirit. Amen? I talked about uh, unrecognized resources is what I'm saying. They, we have resources, but unless you're looking by the Spirit, you're not going to take advantage of those resources. You're going to be stuck with just what is here in the natural. Amen? So let's go back again to 2 Kings verses six, uh, chapter 6 and verse 18. So we're still dealing here with Elijah, but this is 2 Kings uh, chapter 6 and verse 18. And he said, when they came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. Based on what Elijah said was what God did. Amen. The angels immediately blinded the entire army because of the words of a believer. Praise the Lord. Amen. I hear people talking about it all the time. We're in a war. Okay, we're in a war. Our side wins. As long as we keep the faith. Amen. We're going to overcome the enemy. We're going to paralyze him. Blind him. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, 12 and 13. 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13. Praise the Lord. Hey, I mean, it's time, to, it, it's time to build yourself up in the most holy faith. This is not a time to be in fear. Uh, I get it. It's serious stuff. But our God is greater than anything that can come against us. Amen. So, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Now get this. Rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now, amen. Some people have interpreted this. And I've got to tell you, I've, I've struggled with this in the years uh, past. But I have come to a revelation of this. That some have interpreted this to mean we have to suffer. Amen. We have to deal with sickness. We have to suffer with sickness. We have to suffer with poverty. We have to suffer with enemy attacks. Amen. But what this actually is saying to us is that we are partakers of his suffering, meaning we partake because he took it. We don't have to. We are benefiting from his suffering. We don't have to suffer. We are partaking of what he achieved for us by his suffering. Amen. And that's what God's trying to get us to understand. It means because he bore it, we can resist it. We don't have to receive it, praise the Lord. We get the benefit or to partake of what that purchased for us, amen? By faith, amen? That's how we partake of his suffering. We get the benefit of what he suffered for. We're not to suffer. We are to take the benefits of what he suffered for, amen? So look at this now, 1 Peter 4.13. 1 Peter 4.13. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Amen? In our partaking, his glory is revealed. As we partake of the benefits of his suffering, he is glorified. Praise the Lord, his glory is revealed. Why? Because the enemy is defeated. They're blinded. They're destroyed, whatever the need might be. Amen. And verse 14. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he's evil spoken of, but on your part, he's glorified. Praise the Lord. All we have to do is change our thinking. Amen. Isaiah 55, verse 8. I'm wearing Suzanne out back there. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 55 and verse 8. We all know the scripture. It's quoted all the time. He talks about God's ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Amen? So I want you, here's what I want you to notice. Your ways follow your thoughts. Your actions are a result of what you think. Amen? So again, we have to renew our mind to the word of God. So Isaiah 55 verses 10 through 13 now. Isaiah 55, 10 through 13. And here's another thing. You can't, you can't take, you can't get rid of a thought with another thought. You have to have a word to change that thought. Amen? You can't just be thinking in your head 
well, okay, all this bad stuff. Well, I'm, not going to, I'm just not going to believe that. I'm not going to. Just thinking that is not the answer. You have to speak. You have to say to change those thoughts. You have to say. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what, that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Praise the Lord. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Praise the Lord, verse 14. Oh, no, that's, that's, you're good. We're good. Again, so we're talking about the Word of God and our words have to be in conjunction or they have to be in agreement. Amen? And when we, when we do that, when the, He gives us His Word, this is the Word. It comes down like rain out of heaven. I mean, it's just free. It's, it's here. When we agree with this, it goes back to Him and it accomplishes. When we say what He says, it will accomplish whatever it is He sent it to accomplish. Amen? And the result of that is, instead of having thorns and briars, you get beautiful trees. Instead of having uh, drought and, and sickness, you have fresh running water. You have blessings. Instead of going hungry, you have excess food. That's what he's saying. When you say what I say, you get the blessing as a result of it. It's a promise from God. It's a covenant promise from God. Amen? So look at now uh, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 32. Remember we said what you're thinking affects what you're saying. So if you're thinking is not in line with this word. Don't just be thinking about it. Say something about it. Use the word of God as a weapon, as a tool. He said, this is the sword of the Spirit. This is how you defeat the enemy. Amen? If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. In other words, shut the hell up, right? Don't be saying demonic stuff, or that's in agreement with what the devil is saying. Say what God is saying. And that's what God is telling us. If you, if you acted fearful and, and, and foolishly in this sense, in lifting up yourself, or in other words, in making yourself the, the thing that's going to have to defeat this, amen, lay your hand. You've thought evil. That's evil thinking. That's not going to accomplish what you need to do. So what you need to do is stop talking until you can say what He says. If you can't say what the Word of God is saying, don't say anything. Because you're feeding one or the other. You're either giving God power or to operate in our life, or you're giving the enemy power to manipulate you. Amen? So you have to be careful. What you think affects what you say. Amen? And what you say is what you get. Praise the Lord. So we started out when we were talking here this morning, beginning with the covenant promises. And the Hebrew word for covenant translates into cut. Amen? Uh, where blood flows or where someone would make an incision. Amen? Remember Abraham... Uh, he, he believed God, God counted it to him for righteousness, and God made a covenant with him. Amen? God cut the animals in half, he laid them side by side, and then he put Abraham asleep so that Abraham couldn't actually even participate in this. It was God doing it for Abraham. Amen? And so God, it says a smoking lamp went down between those carcasses. That was God. That was the Lord walking through the blood, walking through the, the, the sacrificed animals. Amen? On behalf of of Abraham. Amen? Making a covenant with Abraham and it was all on God to perform it. Amen? That's the kind of covenant we have, amen, in the new covenant. Praise the Lord. They were in covenant. God was making it with himself. Amen? And then later Abraham would circ circumcise himself. But as the scripture says, circumcision didn't save him. It was just an act of faith after the fact. He had already been declared righteous. It was just him acting out, amen, a part uh, to show his connection. Amen. But it isn't what saved him. It was God that did it. Amen. Remember what he promised Abraham? He promised us. Whatever he promised Abraham is ours. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you are an heir of Abraham. You are Abraham's seed or offspring, as far as God's concerned, because it happened by faith, not genetics, not uh, physical uh, issues, but it was about faith. That's how we become the heirs of salvation and heirs uh, uh, and seed uh, of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 4 and verse 16. Praise God. Now, the thing is, this is God speaking. A God who cannot lie. A God whose word is, is true. It's the same as He Himself. So it's not a gimmick here. We're doing what the Word of God has told us to do all along. And that's how we're going to defeat this enemy. It's how we defeat every enemy that comes against a child of God. Amen. So therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Praise the Lord. So God's blessings, God's promises are given to us by faith. It's a free gift. It only takes faith to, to, to receive it. Praise the Lord. Let's go back a little bit here to Romans 4 and verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Look at this. Heir of the world. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, I don't, you know what? Uh, I, I'm like the old guy that says, get off my lawn. Well, I'm, I'm an heir of the world. I'm telling that disease, get out of here. Leave my space. Any place I am, I have dominion over. I'm not allowing no disease. I'm not allowing some virus, praise the Lord, by the Word of God. Amen. God has promised to do some things for us, and God will keep His promises if we trust Him. Praise the Lord. The Scripture says fear is bondage, and God does not want us in bondage. Amen. Remember, He delivered the children of Israel out of bondage. Jesus said, I've come to set the captives free. It's never the will of God for us to be in bondage to anything and certainly not to fear. Praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 12, verse 34 through 36. Exodus chapter 12. Verses 34 through 36. Praise the Lord. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, which came from God, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold and raiment. Praise the Lord. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Praise the Lord. Why? Because they are the seed of Abraham as well, not just by the law, but by faith. They had an inheritance. Remember Jesus told the woman uh, that was bowed down, he said, isn't it just fitting or right that this woman should be healed, seeing she's a daughter of Abraham? Amen. That's part of her promise from God. So they spoiled the Egyptians, or in other words, they took everything they had. Praise the Lord. Abraham's descendants are to inherit or rule this world, not the devil, not the enemy, not the one who wants to take us captive. Praise the Lord. Romans 5, 17. We are to rule the earth, and that means anything that's on it. We have dominion if we'll exercise that dominion, praise the Lord. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Reign in life. That means to rule. That means to have dominion. Amen? Praise the Lord. If you, if you receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, you will reign. So 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34 says, Awake to righteousness. You need to awake to who you are. Awake to what your privileges are. Awake to what your authority is. 
You are an heir of Abraham, the seed of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Open your eyes to the truth is what the Lord is saying to us. Call those things that be not as though they were. Amen. I, we ought to be saying this thing is dead. It's over. And we'll keep saying it until we see the manifestation. Amen. That No plague will come nigh my dwelling. Amen. Praise the Lord. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread on, God has given you to rule. Praise the Lord. And where God is, wherever your authority is, no enemy can defeat you. Praise the Lord. Remember, these blessings, these advantages, amen, they don't come just because they're true. They come when you stand on God's word in faith and expect them to come. Let's look at Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Praise the Lord. This, this will be the last scripture here. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. See, God's covenant with us is by his grace and favor. And by that, we inherit every single promise of God. You can choose life. Listen, you've got to remember in the weeks and, and uh, days ahead, amen, favor is a choice. Praise the Lord. You can choose life and favor. Or you can choose to struggle and barely survive. Open your eyes to God's presence and promise to keep you in all of your ways. Amen. Whatever comes against you, you'll see that he that is with you is greater than he that's against you. Amen. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. The word of God. Amen. We have every victory in Christ, in the Word. Amen. Now, God bless all of you. Stay strong. Stay in the Word. Confess what God has said. Don't be repeating everything you're hearing. Amen. I'm not denying we need to be smart. We need to be, uh, you know, use some common sense when it comes to social distancing and all those things. That's all good and well and good. But here's the deal. The bottom line is this thing's going to end when we believe that God is the source of all of our power, of all of our authority, all of our protection, all that we have need of. And He's waiting on our words to respond to. The rain has come down. The word has come down. Now it's a question, are we going to send it back so that it can fulfill the purpose that it was sent here to do? Amen. And that is to give us every covenant promise that God has made. Amen. A reality in our life. Amen. I hope you're saying praise the Lord right now. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Praise God. He's a, he's a good, a mighty God. Amen. Amen. And there is no lack with Him. So stay strong. Stay in the Spirit. Stay in the Word of God. And be victorious. And we'll all be back together before we know it. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week ahead. And stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, let me, uh, once more, Suzanne just brought it to my attention again. Let me remind you again, next week we'll be having, it's Easter Sunday, and so we're going to be taking communion. So have the elements available for you there, and we'll give you a little bit of time during the service to, to make everything uh, kosher so you can do it. But, uh, but let's do that. Let's have communion next week, and that'll be a thing where we can come together and really appropriate the blessings of God for us all. Amen. God bless you again. See you next week.